Let's take a look at problem number 33. This is dividing uh, rational expressions. <clears throat> Must be losing my mind because I started recording without even my, putting my headset on. <laughs> Maybe time for a break. Uh, let's see, dividing rational expressions. Our first step is to rewrite as multiplication by flipping the fraction following the division symbol. Now, uh, when I say flip it, take the reciprocal of it. Um, so top goes to bottom, bottom goes to the top. Second step, factor everything. Step three, cancel if possible. Only guideline is that they are the same and one is on top and one is on the bottom. And last step, put tops together, put the bottoms together. <coughs> so let's look at this problem. <coughs> see x plus 8 over x minus 8 divided by x squared minus 64 over 8 minus x. Step 1. Rewrite multiplication by flipping the fraction following the division symbol. So this becomes x plus 8 over x minus 8 times 8 minus x over x squared minus 64. So we take a reciprocal of it. <coughs> well, now we need to, uh, step 2, factor everything. Can't do anything with the x plus 8, can't do anything with the x minus 8. This is in the wrong order. We want it to be in standard form. And this one will be the difference of two squares. So we got x plus 8 over x minus 8 times negative x plus 8. Standard form says you write it from largest power down to smallest. Now the x squared minus 64, two terms of the minus string it. That's what tells us difference two squares. We try to write it as something squared minus something else squared. And we ask ourselves what times itself gives us each individual piece. Uh, x times x gives you the x squared. And 8 times 8 gives you a 64. So we take what's inside our first set of parentheses, we add what's in our last, take what's in our side our first, and we subtract what's in our last. So this part factors as x plus 8, x minus 8. <coughs> now the top part um, is GCF. While they don't have anything in common, our first term is negative. And whenever your first term is negative, you always want to factor out a negative. So I'll factor out a negative 1, and that gives us x minus 8. You factor out a negative 1, it basically changes the sign of everything. The negative x becomes positive, the 8 becomes negative. Okay, so everything's factored. Step 3, cancel. <coughs> well, only guideline is one's on top, one's on the bottom. Well, here's an x plus 8, and here's an x plus 8. Those can cancel. Here's an x minus 8, here's an x minus 8. Now, nothing else will cancel. It says put tops together, bottoms together. Well, this one's still pretty, very basic. So we got negative 1 over x minus 8. And that's our answer. Um, now they write a little bit different here. They put the negative downstairs, it looks like. So let me just show you what they did. They put the negative back down here. And then uh, if you multiply that through, you get uh, negative 1 times x, which is negative x, and negative 1 times negative 8, which is a positive 8, which gives us 1 over 8 minus x when we reverse it, which is d as in David. Now, I will tell you, for factoring purposes, it really does make it simpler if you write it in standard form and then factor. You can just see things cancel a lot better. I don't like how they did that, but uh, unfortunately, I didn't, I didn't write that particular problem. Uh, I came out of a test bank. Um, when I say put the top parts together, where is that at? Put tops together and bottoms together. What I mean by that is a lot of times if you have more than a single um, binomial, like you maybe have an x minus 8 times x minus 2, they won't actually multiply them through. They'll leave them like that. So, of course, I say that, and then it's another book will probably multiply those through. But anyway, D. So let's check that. 33D. Mm, 33D, it checks. <coughs> 